This video was made to show the different features of the Cleveland Fire Division's Hazardous Materials Team's Decontamination Unit. The unit was built to Cleveland Fire Department specifications and needs and is being put into service this month, March of 1992. The unit was built in LaGrange, Georgia by Emergency Vehicles Incorporated. The vehicle was designed to supplement our Hazardous Materials Team in field operations, especially when considering inclement weather and other special needs. The specifications of the trailer are as follows. The trailer is 8 feet wide, 14 and a half feet high, and 25 feet long. The height of the vehicle includes the three combination rooftop heating and AC units that are shown. The length of the vehicle is increased from 25 feet to 30 feet with the tongue included. The tongue holds the water heating system. Tongue weight is 2,500 pounds. Overall trailer weight is 11,000 to 12,000 pounds. There are three holding tanks under the vehicle. In the rear, behind the double axle, is a 30-gallon diesel tank which powers the secondary internal heating system on board. In front of the axles are two heated tanks, one a 25-gallon waste holding tank, which holds waste from the laboratory on board the vehicle, and second, a 25-gallon freshwater tank, which supplies fresh water to the laboratory and also supplies fresh water to the outside cold water outlet at the rear of the trailer. All water tanks and water piping on the underside of the trailer are freeze protected. Some of the outside features on the trailer include access doors. This access door on the street side of the trailer is your access to the 200 heaters which are powered by the 30 gallon diesel tank in the rear of the vehicle. The 200 heaters are su supplied two ducts, one of which supplies the first two compartments, the second duct supplies the rear compartment. On the curb side of this is a similar door with access to two 8D 12 volt batteries. These batteries are similar to the batteries that are currently being used on fire department vehicles. Keep in mind when we're talking on this apparatus that we're dealing with two electrical systems. The 12 volt system which is powered by the two AD batteries which are opposite this compartment and a 220 system which has an inlet right here. Along the outside of the trailer you'll notice various fans. These are divided into an intake and exhaust fans. We'll cover those along with the electrical when we go into the interior of the trailer. On the lower portion of the trailer, you'll see that we have the dump valve clearly marked. This is, for, this is the discharge for the 25 gallon holding tank for your wastewater. At the same time, we have levels here and on curbside of the vehicle, along with the level that is placed in the rear on the bumper. These are important to use in conjunction with the stabilizer pads that are located on all four corners of the vehicle. For optimum use of this vehicle, it is recommended that it be at a level plane. This way it will promote correct drainage when the unit is put in service. Behind your dual axles, you have clearly marked your diesel fuel intake, which is the intake for the 30 gallon storage tank, which is going to hold the, the fuel necessary for the 100 heaters. You also have clearly marked the shower drain. There are two compartments on the interior of this vehicle which are equipped with shower facilities. Both compartments drain through this single drain. It is at this point that you would set up a containment pool on the outside of the vehicle. The containment pool would, would catch runoff, and remember, runoff in these instances would be contaminated, would be treated no different than any other stage that you would be going through in the decon process. On both sides of the vehicle are also these small compartments. These storage compartments, are not dedicated compartments. They can be used for whatever, whatever is needed. On each corner of the vehicle are located stabilizers. These stabilizers are important and work in conjunction with the levels that were previously shown you to make sure that this unit is working at a level plane. This promotes the proper drainage through the trench drain located throughout the vehicle. To put the stabilizers in service, it is only a matter of cranking the pod down once you make contact with the ground 
Again, examine the levels, make sure you're working at a level plane, and then continue to the next portion of the operation. Now step to the rear of the trailer. At the rear of the trailer, several features have been added so the decon process can be started prior to having a member actually enter the trailer. If you'll notice, we have an awning above us. The awning can be used in inclement weather, whether it's rain or direct sunlight. The idea is we can make a small area here that can be shaded. Secondly, breathing air. Four outlets, which are supplied by an interior tank. Whether it is the member going through decon or members of the decon team, at this point, you have the option of going on air. Over here, you also have a cold and a hot water outlet. This is important because these outlets can be wide together, and irregardless of weather, you can have warm water at a stage in the rear of the trailer if this is where you elected to do a gross decon. What I'd like to do now is take you into a easel. An overview of the unit shows that it is divided into three chambers. A first chamber, a second chamber, and a third chamber. The first chamber is designed as a large shower unit. The second chamber is designed as a smaller shower unit. And the third chamber is designed as a rehab, medical, or rest section. The first unit, a member would enter from the rear, and he would then have an oversized area to walk into. This was taken into account from the standpoint if a member entered in chemical protective clothing, he would need two tenders to take care of him in this unit. There are two shower heads and an overhead HVAC unit, which would probably work down to approximately 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Below freezing temperatures, we would start to use the secondary heating system, which is in the front of the trailer and is supplied by separate ductwork that runs along this wall. The member would go through an area here, which is an airlock chamber, by entering, opening a first door, entering the unit, closing the door behind him, and then having to open a second door before entering the second shower area. This would enable less contaminant to enter the second shower area, and a member would be able to go through a more thorough personal hygiene type of a decon. It also is equipped with two shower heads and an overhead HVAC unit. Walking through this door into the medical or rehab section, a member would then walk into this unit, which again is equipped with its own HVAC, and has a separate laboratory should the member need to use it. One thing to keep in mind in the design of this is that as far as intake and exhaust fans go, the only intake fan is located in the third chamber or the area to the front of the trailer. This was in hopes that by putting exhaust fans throughout the rest of these areas, we would be able to create a positive pressure flow going in this direction. Every time a member opens a door, rather than have contaminant follow him into the area, it is the hopes that it will be pushed toward the rear. Prior to entering the vehicle, make sure that you have the steps marked for the rear of the vehicle firmly in place. These steps will snap into place against the bumper. When you have it secure and level, Open the door and make entry into the first chamber. The first area of the decon trailer is designed with extra width because of the fact a man might come in here with chemical protective clothing and need the assistance of two other people in this area. It's designed for tenders. Three people could comfortably fit in here. It has two shower heads and an on-off valve. The on-off valve is simply that, it's for on and off. Water temperature is adjusted at the front of the trailer previous to having the member come into this area. It's equipped with its own heating and air conditioning unit, which is probably good down to about 30 degrees. Once you start getting below freezing temperatures, you might consider the auxiliary system, which is supplied through this ductwork. The area itself is made in such a way that it can also be decontaminated. These areas and these areas are designed with the idea that the hot seat or the spray washer could be brought in here afterwards and used to decontaminate the area. It's also equipped with a 110 volt outlet. If a man comes in here with a powder form material on him and you elect not to use a wet decon, you might elect to use a dry decon. The 110 is here for that, to, that purpose. The exhaust fan on the wall is simply activated by pulling the chain and allowing the vent to, to start to work. You'll notice also 
on the flooring. It's easily picked up and removed, and at this point you'd be allowed to come in here and clean up this area. It is supplied one single trench drain in the middle. This is where this compartment drains through. That's why it's important that when you are using this compartment or using the unit, that you have the unit leveled. Now let's go through the first interlock, which divides this decon chamber from the second decon chamber. Upon entering this interlock between the first decon chamber and the second decon chamber, close the door firmly behind you. This area is equipped with its own exhaust fan and a trench drain. This again goes to the drain outlet on the street side of the vehicle. In this compartment, which again can be easily deconned, this would be an area where a member could remove any additional clothing that he wanted to take off prior to going into the second chamber. Or, if he was on air, he could take his SCBA off and drop it right here. If he opened this door to enter into the second chamber and closed it behind him, it would be the responsibility of the members working in the first chamber to pick up this equipment and remove it off the back of the trailer so it doesn't go any further through the process. Now let's go into the next chamber. In the second decon chamber, as you can see, it is much smaller. It does not have the width. This area is not designed that a person would be in with a tender. It still has similarities to the first one in that it has two shower heads, overhead heating and air conditioning, separate duct work should additional heating be necessary, and an exhaust fan. In this area, the, the material that is put on the walls and the floor is similar, and there is a drain area underneath my feet. What we've added is pegs over off here to the side. The pegs are there for the fact that a person could hang a bag on that area. When he comes in here for personal hygiene or for a better cleansing, he can take the bag, remove the contents, which could be shampoo, soap, and brushes, etc., and after using them, use whatever additional clothing he has, put back into the bag, and tag it with his name on it. That way it would be available if it was needed later. At this time, the last section we have to talk about is the rehab or the rest section, or the medical section. So let's step up there now. This is the third and final section of the trailer. The design of this area was again for rest or rehab for the members. In the future, we're going to have a bottle placed here, an M cylinder for breathing air. This is what will supply your connections in the back of the unit. We also have lavatory, explosion proof lighting, explosion proof hatches. Moving to this area where the bench seat is, a member can sit down, take one of the desks, and at this point, you can do a BP or a check after he's come out of the clothing or out of his chemical protective suit. You'll notice the area has its own thermostat. It has optional heating along with the rooftop heating unit and air conditioning unit. And it also has the only intake fan that is on board the unit. The idea, again, was to create positive pressure in this, the third and final chamber, and allow the positive pressure to work toward the rear of the trailer. The other thing I wanted to show you at this time was the electrical units, which are located at the end of this bench. Keep in mind one thing on this unit. If we're going to create a positive pressure in this chamber, the oversized exit door, which we have right here, should be kept closed at all times that the unit is being used. On the electrical panels, you have 110, your 12-volt, and aircraft circuit breakers, which are simply a push and pull operation. The 110 switches are clearly marked, and you'll also notice that above the 110 panel, you have your Hunter heaters. The heaters are located here, behind the large door. Should you need to activate them, all you need to do is press the buttons. You'll get a green light and within 30 seconds they should activate and start to supply heat within the unit. Let's move outside and go into some of the operations of the hot water system. On the front of the trailer, we have the only water inlet. This inlet provides the 25 gallon fresh water tank and at the same time splits it directly to the back to your cold water outlet on the rear of the trailer. 
It's clearly marked as a water inlet, and it indicates the minimum of 30 PSI and maximum of 100 PSI on the intake. This is a one and a half inch national standard thread. It also supplies this unit, the Landau hot water or pressure wash, depending on what you want. This unit, when activated, will heat the water within the trailer in a matter of about 30 seconds. The unit itself is completely contained. It has its own fuel, it has its own battery, and it has its own charging system. To activate the unit, it is simply a matter of supplying the water, pressing the start button, turning on the burners, and giving yourself approximately half a minute, you'll start to receive water within the vehicle. Should the water temperature be too hot or too cold, you could go to the adjustment on the side and make your necessary adjustments to increase temperature or decrease the temperature of the water. To start the, the apparatus, just do this. On the side of the unit is your mixing valve to control the temperature, and you have a total of six valves, five in this vicinity around the mixing valve, one in the rear. Three of the valves are yellow, three of the valves are blue. Depending on which operation you want this unit to perform, you would simply turn the yellow valves off to shower and turn the blue valves on, or to pressure wash, turn the blue valves off and turn the yellow valves on. Depending on which operation you want this unit to perform, you will have three valves open and three valves closed. There is also a drainage valve at the, at the bottom of the unit, which is marked with a green handle. The only other thing to show you on the front of the trailer is this, your 220 outlet, which we mentioned earlier in the film. In summary, now that you've seen the vehicle in general, we'd like to make the following steps recommended practice for when you're putting the vehicle in operation. The first step would be to position the vehicle. Place the vehicle in the best area topographically and in relation to the scene. Once the vehicle is in position, step two, stabilize. In the four corners of the vehicle are the stabilizing pads. Put those in operation and use the levels on both sides of the trailer and in the rear to make sure that this is working at its optimum level, which is at an even keel. Three, set up your containment pools. Underneath your drain outlet on the street side of the vehicle, place the containment pools, three of which come with the vehicle, in service at that area to contain any runoff that would come from the shower areas. Step four. Attach your water supply line. The front of the trailer has the only water intake on the unit. Inch and a half national standard thread connection. Prior to attaching the line to the intake, make sure that the water supply has been flushed and you are only dealing with clean water. Remember, the underside of the unit is freeze protected. The line running from the unit to whatever you're using for the water source will not be freeze protected. Take that into account in inclement weather. Step five, attach your electrical. 220 outlet on the front of the unit. The 220 connection is made with the twist to lock it on. Six, attach your steps to the rear and to the side where you will be entrance and exit are marked. Both steps are stenciled indicating which area it should go on. Make sure the steps are attached firmly to the bumpers in both areas. Step seven, turn on all circuits. Go into the rehab unit, approach both of the panels, both on your 110 and on your 12 volt systems. Turn on the units that are applicable for what you need according to the weather and what the function is going to be on that particular day. Step eight, do an interior walkthrough. Go ahead and walk through the unit, all three compartments, just to make sure that things like the lights that are needed are on, all of your fans are operational, the doors throughout are unlocked, and all your HVAC units are working, and thermostats are set if the secondary heating system is necessary. And finally, check your water supply system. 
Now that you have the intake fastened to the front of the trailer, if the line is not charged, charge it at this time. Open all the valves on the landing unit, three blue or three yellow, depending on which operation you are looking to do, if you are using the showers or if you're going to use the pressure washer. Start the landing unit, as was shown earlier in the film. Check the water temperature within the unit, in each shower. If the water temperature is not suitable, then go back to the front of the, the vehicle on the tongue and make your adjustment on the lander unit. When you shut the waters down at this point, your unit is ready and you will know what your water temperature will be once the members enter the particular decon chambers. Now what we want to do is go over into the vehicle which will be towing this unit and we'll show you some of the operations on that.